Welcome to another RSC podcast. Um, my name is Margaret Mackay and I'm the advisor for inclusion at the Regional Support Centre. And um, I'm here in Dumfries and Galloway College today with Stephen Shellard. Hi, Stephen. Hi there. Stephen's um, a lecturer for, uh, in supported learning here at the college. And Stephen's going to talk to us today about how he uses some of the um, access apps and edu apps resources to support the delivery of uh, learning and teaching within the supported learning programmes. Thank you very much for joining us today, Stephen. You're welcome. You. Can you, you've been using uh, the EduApps resources to, to deliver some of your uh, work with, with students in supported learning programmes. Yes could, yes. could you tell me a wee bit about the, the tools that you've been using, um, what they do, and why you've been using them? Yes, well, I would just say to start with, uh, I mean, I, I got interested initially in the idea of the memory stick and its use for individual students. But as I began to familiarise myself with the applications, I could see that there was a number of them had a potential mm -hmm. for use in presentation of lessons. And as I worked with students in supported learning programmes, I, I particularly saw their potential in that context. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, the, the ones that, that jumped out at me were actually some of the simplest of, of the applications. The first one that I, I, I chose to use is called Sonar. And really all it is is a little blue circle that comes up on the screen around the screen pointer. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing a demonstration on the whiteboard, uh, not just for the supported learning programs actually, it can be quite difficult for people to keep track of what you're, the sequence of things that you're trying to show them on, on the whiteboard. But when you put the little blue circle up, it makes it much more obvious mm -hmm. what you're doing and you can use it for highlighting things on the screen mm -hmm. and so on. Um, the second application that I, uh, I started to use is similar in some respects, it's called ViewBar. Mm -hmm. And ViewBar allows you to uh, highlight a, a line of text. It's like a little box that you put around a line of text on the screen. Mm -hmm. And where I've used that is if I'm reviewing a, a web page with a group of students, for example, uh, and maybe a group of students whose reading skills are not that strong, mm -hmm. and I'm actually wanting them to read the text, perhaps with a little bit of support, mm -hmm. I can then put up the, the view bar to, to isolate the line of text that I'm wanting them to focus on. Mm -hmm. I, I find that you can change the color of the little box, and that actually is helpful initially I think it, the default is perhaps white yes, and right. that didn't always highlight the text as effectively mm -hmm. as I wanted it to so I started choosing other colours like green and blue to, yeah. uh, to, to, to really properly highlight the text. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a further application that I've used perhaps not quite as frequently is there's a, a little magnifier that you can put up on the screen. Now actually I increasingly realised when you're looking at a web page, you can actually use the, um, the zoom on the web page mm -hmm. to increase the size of the text. But even with that, there will sometimes be little details mm -hmm. that you're wanting to emphasise and look at in a little, a little bit more closely. And the magnifier uh, enables you to do that. Uh, and you can change the, um, the degree of mag magnification, you can cr change the size and, if I remember correctly, the shape of the, yes. the magnifier yes. as well. Right. Um, so, so those are three very basic and mm -hmm. simple applications that I, I've used. But I also uh, you have used a, a couple of other applications. Uh, one of them with students uh, was the, the mind mapping software. Now, mind mapping, of course, was something that was being pushed at me to some extent and mm -hmm. other lecturers, but which I hadn't really got into properly mm -hmm. until I looked at the little demonstration, the online demonstration for Free Mind. Yes. And I could see immediately that it was fairly easy to get started on. And so I started to think about how I might use it in my classes. Mm -hmm. Where I mostly use it is in introducing a new topic. And what I find with some of the groups I work with is if you ask them for ideas, a kind of brainstorming session, you can get some very off-the-wall ideas. 
uh, a lot of non sequiturs. But you're wanting to be positive about the kinds of suggestions that people make. And I've found that with free mind, I can generally find a place in the mind map for all of the ideas that come in from the group. Mm -hmm. And then as you develop the mind map, you can start to prioritize and slightly restructure it. Mm -hmm. And then the nice thing is that at the end of that discussion, you actually have a product that you can print off and give to the students, which is a, a summary of the discussion that you've had in, in the class. Yes. Now, that, that really is a summary of the, uh, of the way I've used the applications yes. directly yes. with students. But I have also made some use of uh, the Calm Studio application. And if you'd like me to say a few words about yeah, that as that well. Yeah, that would be great, absolutely. I've actually used it more in the development of uh, training for staff, mm -hmm. where there is a, a procedure on the, our computers here in college that I think it would be helpful for staff in the college to have awareness of. Mm -hmm. And what uh, CAM Studio enables you to do is to record a sequence of a sequence that you may perform on, on, on your computer but also to talk over that whilst you're doing it. So that you then produce, in fact, a, a video. Mm -hmm. And generally, these are very short videos, just a few minutes in length at most. And that video can then be made av available online mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for other lecturers to, to access. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a very simple tool to use, mm -hmm. although, to be perfectly honest, I've usually had to have a few goes at it. There's generally a few false starts yeah. and you realise halfway through that you've forgotten to say something yeah. important. But with not too much effort, you can okay. produce a fairly clear demonstration mm -hmm. that other lecturers can, can make use Watch of. Watch again, I yep. guess. And what kind of things have you demonstrated or recorded using CAM Studio? Give us maybe some examples of the kind of things that you've used to uh, okay. demonstrate for people. Well, uh, I have actually started using um, a, a, a virtual learning environment that we have here in Dumfries and Galloway College. It's the open source program Moodle. Mm -hmm. And I have started using that with my uh, supported learning programs. Mm -hmm. But because I um, like to think of myself as a little pioneering in this respect, I wanted to uh, tell other lecturers about what I was doing. Yeah. And so I set up a a, a Moodle course specifically for that purpose. Yes. But built into this Moodle course were a number of demonstrations of how to, for example, upload materials to the to the learning environment, mm -hmm. uh, how to insert a, a link to a website that uh, you might consider useful. Yes. And I was able to uh, show how to do these with a series of little Cam Studio videos. So I think I've developed about four of them so far, and then those were inserted into the, the course that I had developed yeah. for lecturers, but it's really all about encouraging them to make use of the virtual learning environment. Right, so I guess you've been using it as a sort of staff development Oh, very much, as yes. Well. yes. Fantastic. I suppose as well it means that people can go back and look at it again and again if they've forgotten or they're not sure what to do. It's easier than having a written piece of text that they read and try and make sense of. Well, I think so. I. I was encouraged to do this really through looking at the uh, the, the short video demonstrations, which I were offered for to show how the different applications worked with Access Applications and, and Edu Apps, yeah. and I I find them so such a useful introduction to the applications that uh, that encouraged me to think of other ways of of, of using the, the, the that approach. Fantastic, that's great. And, on, and you were talking about um, one of the other tools that you've used before was the, the click and type keyboard as well. Ah, yes, yes, of course, I was overlooking that. <laughs> one. But you, 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 yes, another useful one for working with students. Again, when I'm using an interactive whiteboard and uh, I'm doing an activity where I'm very much wanting students to come up and do things at the interactive whiteboard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Frequently, there will be some text entry involved in that. Now, of course, I can I can do that from the keyboard, 
computer that I'm using. Mm -hmm. But I think it's much more engaging for the students if they have a keyboard on the screen and using the interactive whiteboard pen, they can just uh, click in the words that they want. Mm -hmm. And usually it's just short words that I'm looking for. Yes. I mean, an example would be um, teaching how students how to find images on using Google image search. Yes. So I get them to come up obviously with Google up. Yes. Well, I actually get them to put Google up on the screen mm -hmm. and then with the interactive whiteboard, they can put in a, a word which searches for the kind of things that they're looking for. So, so really it's, it's very much a tool for promoting interactivity. Very much so, yes. Um, fantastic. Yeah. So really it sounds <coughs> like you know a lot of the tools that you've been using have been very much about engaging learners, about enhancing the delivery of the, the work that you're, you know, the delivery of your learning and your teaching as, as well for students. Yes. Which is great because we've seen a lot of examples so far of how learners have used some of the applications, but I think there are lots of really useful ways that lecturers and staff within colleges as well they can, can use the, the tools. Yes, I think some great tools for lecturers and, and not <coughs> not just for supported learning programmes. I mean, I think it's obvious how the, the value of these tools for supported learning programmes, but I would use them in other contexts as well, I'm quite sure. So we've heard today about how Stephen has used a range of the a Access and EduApp resources to support the, the work that he does um, in teaching and supported learning programmes here at the Fries and Galloway College. Stephen, I'd, I'd like to thank you very much for, for your time. Oh, thank you. And I know that... Um, people who are watching this podcast will find this particularly useful and might even uh, encourage them to use some of the resources in the ways that you have indicated. So thank you very, very much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you.